know, Cindy, it seemed like last week, everybody started talking about e-wallets because uh, the government's e to Nairat Yat initiative finally came in. There were some hiccups along the way. But, you know, the, the reason I wanted to talk about it is what actually is the overall impact? Because the amount is small, but people seem to get very excited about it. So it's not the money, it's not going to make us huge leaps in GDP, but it's just about getting people on the platform, isn't it? Yes, you're right. Uh, it is um, about getting more people on the platform. Because um, there was a study done by Nielsen last year, I think, yeah. which um, Finance Minister Lim Guan Eng quoted in Parliament. Uh, basically, um, awareness for e-wallets is at 88% in, in Malaysia. Right. But, uh, I didn't know it was that high, actually. It, it, aw awareness is high, but only 8% people actually use it. Right, okay, that makes more sense. So, 8% uh, um, in, in our population is about only 2.6, about 2.6 million people. Mm. So, um, 15 million is supposed to be able to people are, are supposed to be able to benefit from this 450 million that yeah. uh, the government is giving out. Yeah. So if, if everyone do sign up, uh, it, it's, it's the um, penetration rate is going to triple at least. Yeah, but I suppose I will, I, I've got a friend who's stubborn and old fashioned and still doesn't like the idea of like e-wallets, but there are beneficial, there are benefits to e-wallets, aren't there? Uh, yes, um, I, I know people who don't accept it because I mean you can have lunch and I you could only bring just, out your phone, right? Yeah, bring out my yeah. I, I but just there bring are my phone. economic benefits to having. Them. There are, and um, finance minister did say in parliament as well that um, there was a study done by uh, the central bank, and um, apparently there is a one percent GDP gain benefit, so to speak, if more people actually use e-wallets, and of course um, it, there is also benef them benefits. Um, if more people in the informal sector actually get on uh, to the system. What do you mean, what do you mean by informal sector? Informal sector, uh, for instance, if, if you're able to go to a Pasar Malam mm. and uh, imagine being able to pay with your e-wallet as well. Uh, you can already see that in, in tourist, small touristy places. Uh, you, I guess from China to, to cater to the Chinese tourists, you have the QR codes. Mm. And if you go to Penang, for instance, um, Armenian Street, you have a lot of the sellers uh, already giving you the option to pay with um, a QR code. Uh, I think that's a good thing because like you said, it's these small guys. Yep. And you get them on digital payment and they don't have to worry about handling a lot of cash. Yes, it's also safety. In, in I mean, for me, I, I wouldn't want to be depositing a lot of cash into you know, bringing that, that around, mm. imagine that. From and the pasar from, from to the, the pasa bank. From the to the bank and all that. Of course, uh, if it, it, it's an, it's, there is an efficiency gain to this. Actually, Guan Eng got uh, questioned a lot about security last mm. week yes. because he seemed, they seem to think, paranoid people that they are, um, that they are using this information to gather uh, gather intel on, on the people and he actually had this answer you could tell me whether you agree with it or not that he said look we already have your IC that will tell us more than anything else the only thing that this will tell you is consumption patterns uh, yes and no um, I, I think it's it's great that um, the government would probably learn a little bit more about what people actually spend with the 30 ringgit that, that mm. the government gives them. But of course, uh, you and I know that discounts, uh, promotions can also skew spending. So, but it's, it's great that the government actually gets some idea because the e-wallet providers themselves would already know. And um, all of them are also already uh, ask you for your personal data when you sign up. Correct. Right? Yes. So, well. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. that. I, I suppose it's just uncertainty and yes. you just need to Fear get over this. Fear mongering. You have to just get over this hurdle. It, I'm not. Design. I'm not belittling the fact that um, privacy or privacy, um, data security is concerned. But um, yeah. it's 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 not going to be addressed um, with this. I mean, you need to address that. And um, I think generally, it's not just for e-wallets, but you you sign up for any app, and they will ask you for your personal data. So now, after the initial flush of people have faded, how does the government build on a program like this to encourage the digital economy? Okay, for um, the first thing, there is um, 
awareness. All these this new people, 1.8 million people who have applied so far, mm. they probably weren't aware and they didn't have an e-wallet. Or, yeah, some of them probably didn't have an e-wallet. Or, and, didn't or they didn't much. use it as much. So with um, 30 Ringgit and also all the benefits that uh, the three providers are giving, they, they probably got a little taste, if they haven't already knew, um, of the benefits of, of actually being on an e-wallet and uh, when you have more people on an e-wallet uh, this is basically where the country is going in terms of digitization um, if this is highly successful i wouldn't be surprised um, that if the government actually does another round for more on the stories pick up a copy of the edge weekly at all good newsstands